Some time ago, I showed you guys how to put together arcade coffee tables, but I didn't really go into details on how to wire them up. Now, I'm not going to be going back into building coffee tables or anything like that, but I wanted to really show you guys how to actually wire up the control pads for them, um, or joysticks, or whatever you want to call them. Now, here we have here is what we call a USB encoder. Um, these are really quite generic encoders and you can find them on Amazon, on eBay and they're relatively quite cheap and basically this just plugs in all your arcade style buttons and converts it into a USB signal that your computer or Raspberry Pi or whatever you're using can understand. Now these things are really, really quite simple to use, but they can be quite um, intimidating for those of you who have never done it before. So today I'm going to build a joystick um, arcade controller. Um, I'm going to be using wood. You guys might be building a cabinet at home or some sort of other system where you maybe got plastic panels. Um, this will be slightly different because you'll be obviously trying to attach all your cables onto a plastic panel so you won't be using you certainly won't be using um, nails and stuff like that but the general idea of wiring up will be the same so when you buy these kits you normally receive a Sanwa joystick uh, style joystick these aren't generally um, made by Sanwa because they are quite expensive they normally retail for about 20-30 pounds just for this component here Whereas you can buy all this that you see here for about 15, 16 pounds on again, sites like eBay and Amazon. Um, so first off, let's uh, let's go through all our components. So we've got our joystick. This is our four way joystick. Uh, we've actually got an extension bar on here. And these are not normally included in packs, but uh, these things do come in handy, especially when you uh, embedding it into like quite thick wood it just allows it um, the actual bar to poke out a little bit more and it's just a bit more comfortable but we won't be using that today so we've got our joystick we've got our set of buttons these are just very simple buttons um, you can get lots of different styles of these you can get ones that light up with LEDs um, yeah, there's loads of different ones, loads of different colours, but they are all generally the same. A lot of people will talk about the quality of them. These are about standard, really. I mean, I've always used these ones. I find them, they're just absolutely fine. They're not too tough to press, and they're just, just about what I would expect um, from a traditional arcade system. You know, when you were younger, you'd go to the arcade, you'd find a machine with these sort of buttons. It's about right. Obviously, they are on the cheaper end. You can get higher quality ones, but these are just the you know generic standard ones. We've got the encoder here, and we're going to be plugging everything into it. We've got all the wiring. So these are all the wires for the buttons. We've got the joystick wiring as well, and we've got a few other things. And we've got the ball joystick ball here. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need. There's obviously the cable. We've got the cable here. We've got loads of cables wrapped up in it. We've got the cable here. This just uh, obviously plugs in to the encoder, and then you've got your USB that goes to your computer. And we'll have a look at that at the end. So yeah. So first things first. Uh, we need to obviously build our joystick. Um, panel and you can get these normally pre-made on eBay or Amazon um, a lot of people make these with CNC machines or if you've made your own absolutely great then we don't really need to go through this you've already went through the design phase of that and you already understand the basic concept but for those of you who are just kind of just looking at it and just figuring out how things go if we have a look at our panel so these are the way I make them. Uh, these might be entirely different to what you've come across. But we've got our six holes for our buttons. These buttons measure 30 millimeters in diameter and you can get hole saws that measure 30 mil. And yeah, those are the sort of things you need for cutting 
these sort of holes in wood and plastic etc there's a few different types of tools i do like the hole saws i don't have one handy it might flash one up on screen when i come to editing but um yes yeah, so that's 30 millimeters and we've got this small hole which is 24 millimeters in diameter so you would need a different one so that's the hole that i generally make for the actual joystick to sit through so like that and then so we've got our six buttons we've got the little hole for the joystick we've got and a hole on the top this is what i normally make into the hotkey so the hotkey in the software would allow you to exit a game in um, whatever system you're using emulator etc you also need two other holes as well um, located somewhere else on your panel maybe up here for example but this has actually come off a completely different um, this has come off a arcade coffee table so the design will require the start and the select button on the front so I've got two buttons two small buttons using 24 mil um, buttons, they're just the small ones. I'm not sure if we've got one here. I have one lingering around somewhere. No, I don't think I've got one. Oh, hang on. So, yeah, these smaller buttons, so they're fitting there. Obviously, that's for my joystick there, so uh, you can have it up here if you want to. Start and select whatever whatever design of joystick you've got, um, controller panel you've got. But the general idea of putting these together is. Um, have your joy have your buttons six buttons like this or if you've got an eight-way system it would be slightly similar you can actually get um, templates off the internet I might link one in the description and then the joystick is directly opposite so it kind of just follows along that's a general design there's a lot of designs out there but we we're not really focusing in that today we're really focusing on how to wire everything up so Let's start putting in our, our buttons. So I'll put all my white to the bottom. Just It just makes it look a little bit prettier. Put my hotkey at the top. So that's our buttons in. We flip it around. Obviously we're not ready to put our joystick in just yet so we can put that to one side so we need to grab our encoder now I mount these onto my wooden panels using velcro as you can see we've got velcro here ready you can use screws there's little screw holes there if you want to but I just use velcro keeps it in place okay so the wiring of this is really quite straightforward but it's just a matter of keeping it neat and tidy so you'll get wires like this two cables they don't always color code them like this sometimes they're blue and white doesn't really matter they're all generally the same so here we've got all our two pin connections just here and this is for our buttons now some people say there is a specific way you need to wire these up but honestly there isn't because at the end of the day it's the software that you use in your emulator that determines what each button does but it is a good idea just to keep things neat and tidy so i'll start with the furthest away button so this one here and then i'll connect it to there so let's put this one in to get the right way around first that's that in and then i will plug it in to the first away arcade button so you've got your two pins and they just slide on to the connections as shown and they're pretty sturdy you don't really need to do anything else with them sometimes you get um, cable covers plastic covers but these are pretty sturdy they're not going anywhere and they're not going to cause really any issues so again let's repeat that next button so I want to move along there and then go with along there
Right, and there we have it. All our buttons are wired up. Obviously, I don't have a start and select. Uh, you'll need one of those. Obviously, you want this um, to have as many functions as possible. It just makes setting up the software so much easier. I don't have one available to me. I don't, I don't have any holes to put them in. Um, so, yeah, just remember to have a start and select button hole as well. And then you can just put those in um, alongside the rest of these buttons. So the next thing we need to do, we need to wire in our joystick. So we have a five pin here. Sometimes you actually get um, four pin versions and um, it depends which, which joystick you get really. But there is a connection here somewhere on these boards for those joysticks. Sometimes a joystick will just come with wires like this and it will connect onto the bottom. But in my case, I have a five pin connector. So I am going to connect into the five pin connection found just there. And that's that. So the final cable is uh, the actual cable that runs to your computer system. And that just goes on the end just there. It is a four pin connection and it just goes in just like that. And we can secure that in place later on. So obviously we've got a joystick to put in. Um, but for now, let's tidy all this up because let's face it, this is an absolute mess. And over time, when you're using it, things are going to get loose if we don't tidy everything up. So for me, I use just these cable clips. Now obviously, if you're going into plastic, you're going to need something else. But if you're going into wood, I've got cabinets are made out of wood. So these are ideal. You can get these, you can get these anywhere. You can get them in Powerland if you're in the UK. I'm sure you'll be able to get them in all your DIY stores and so on. These are quite small because obviously these are quite thin cables. So let's start tidying everything up. So all I like to do is bunch all the cables together and move them quite far down. And then use a hammer so already this is starting to look so much neater so let's finish up and get this looking really nice and tidy. Okay, so that's pretty much that done. Uh, I'm not going to put my joystick in because we need to line it up really. But really what we'd, we would do is we just put it into the panel and connect it in to the five pin connection as shown and then just secure this Y down and that's all you really need to do. So that is it. That is how to wire up a standard USB encoder for these joystick buttons. As you can see, um, everything's relatively neat and tidy. There's probably a few more things I could do to get it all nice and flush, you know, keep all these wires nice and tight against the actual um, controller panel. Make sure all your connections are nice and tight and they're not going to fall off. These clips are designed to hold on pretty tightly, but uh, every now and again you'll get a loose connection. So make sure it's all nice and tight, then you won't have any issues when you get to the software side of things, because that's where it really matters. But so far, everything's wired up correctly. And this should not give you any issues within the software itself. Say it was RetroPie, for example, when you set it up, Emulation Station will ask you to begin inputting all the different button settings. But yeah, this is how it should be. And that is pretty much how to wire it all up. So thanks again for watching and um, we'll see you very soon.